Fighting for an economically sustainable women's ice hockey team, North America's female Olympic hockey stars are standing together and showcasing their skills in the Dream Gap Tour. This is an effort to draw attention to the lack of a professional women's ice hockey league that pays players a living wage and also has the infrastructure to set the sport up for long-term success. In today's Bloomberg Equality, our ongoing conversation about the bottom line impact of diversity, I sat down with Kendall Coyne Schofield, captain of the U.S. national hockey team and an Olympic gold medalist about the current state of women's hockey. There were two professional leagues standing at this time last year, but those leagues weren't professional. There's nothing professional about them. You can't make a living playing in them. You can't be professional. It's basically a glorified beer league in which it's a way for us to continue to play hockey. We have to find training mechani mechanisms on our own. We're bringing our bags home. We're practicing at 10.30 at night. There's no pregame meals. There's no, there's no sense of being a professional athlete in the current state of the professional women's game. There's never been a sustainable and viable professional league that has allowed us to make a living playing the game if we're the best in the, of the best. Why and is it so hard to make that work? It, it shouldn't be. It, it really shouldn't be. I think it's because oftentimes as women we're grateful for opportunities and that's where this Professional Women's Hockey Players Association came about is we're done being grateful for the leagues that are standing because they're not good enough. We can't make a living playing this game so why do we continue to sign ourselves up for it? Why do we who work so hard every single day to make our craft possible give ourselves to a league that's paying us $2,500 and calling ourselves professional athletes. We're not professional athletes. It's a hobby. Mm -hmm. You're making $2,500. You're practicing twice a week at 1030 at night and that's professional. I hear what you're saying but at the same time what needs to happen for you to establish a framework uh, for an economically viable women's professional league that does pay players a living wage. I mean, the Dream Gap Tour is fantastic, but mm -hmm. it's a one-time event. What happens after this? How do you put the building blocks in place? We need the infrastructure, we need the resources to support the women's game. What kind of discussions have you had with, say, the NHL or NHL team owners about the prospect for a, uh, a viable, an economically viable professional women's hockey league? I think if you ask all of us that are part of this Professional Women's Hockey Players Association, we want the NHL. We want to see a WNHL in our future. We want to be a sister organization to the NHL, and we want them to be our brother organization. You look at the w WNBA, mm -hmm. you look at how many of those NBA players you see supporting the women's players, how many of those women's players supporting the men's players. It's, a, it's electrifying. And you know, just recently, the, the playoffs are happening and the teams are cross country, and, and the WNBA say, you know, said, you know what, we need to make a professional decision here. We're going to be chartering the teams cross country to compete in the playoffs. Yeah, so the WNBA. Just to, give you, just, just to give you an example, we usually fly in at midnight and we're taking holiday and shuttles to and from the hotel, packing our bags in there. And then when we get to the hotel, we eat continental breakfast. And then we're told if you want a post game meal, you can go Uber to get one. So the current state of the game is nothing professional. Right. You basically have just described a tournament for Pee Wees um, over the weekend that, you know. I got treated better in Pee Wee hockey, actually. Okay, well that says something. You mentioned the WNBA and how that's a good model um, for how things can work. Um, talk a little bit here about the sponsors for the Dream Gap Tour because they are, there's a lot of them and there's actually uh, some big names here. We're talking about Adidas, Billie Jean King's organization, Magellan Corporation. Have you had mm -hmm. discussions with any of these entities about um, a longer term sponsorship for your organization? The immediate conversation has been about the Dream Gap Tour, but all of these companies that have shown support understand the bigger picture, understand that all of the product and the best players in the world have come together to fight for a sustainable league. We're willing to forego the convenience of the couple leagues that are still standing today in order to fight for a better future. I mentioned Billie Jean King's organization. Uh, she obviously mm -hmm. is very invested in, she's a pioneer in her own right. Um, any particular yep. lessons that you got from Billie Jean King when it comes to uh, your organization? Uh, 
we we learn something new every day from Billie Jean King. This process has not been easy. It's it's been exhausting, um, and times times do get tough. But you look at what Billie Jean King did and what she continues to do, and we've reached out to her. We've for support and guidance and strength. And you know, when we look at what she accomplished, we say, well, she did it. So can we? And she, there, there were very there were less of her back in the, back when she started her fight over 50 years ago, and we're 200 strong. So um, we have one collective voice as players, and that's something we learned from her. And with that, we're, we're so much stronger together. Can you give me a specific concrete outcome that you would like to see as a result of ho holding this Dream Gap Tour? I would love to see a WNHL in the fall of 2020.